came all the way from uh, California for this. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. This is an incredible event. It's great to be a part of it. And uh, you have, uh, so you've been busy. You've, uh, you've created a whole new social network. Yes, thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, thank you to LeWeb and, and you for your extensive use of Google+. Oh, we like it. Yeah, thank we, you. We did uh, Hangouts, and I don't know if some of you have uh, participated in those, but uh, yeah, we just did it randomly, like invite a speaker and get, you know, get them on, and I think it's, it's a really nice tool. I have to admit, it's very close to what I want, wanted to do with my own company year one, five years ago. So well, that's a high compliment. I, I like it. It's very interactive, and I, I think we will try some of that later. Excellent. Um, this, can you tell me what is, what is Google Plus? So because my, we don't, like many people don't, you know, are not sure exactly. Yeah, I, I think my answer today will be remarkably similar to the answer we gave when we launched the service, which was almost a year ago. We've been in market a little over 11 months, first in a private beta, and then we opened publicly some time later. Um, it's really two things. The first is a social foundation that unifies identity and relationship and interest across all of Google's services. And I want to speak about that for a minute. Um, As you guys know, Google has uh, amazing services that are enjoyed by hundreds of millions, billions of users around the world. Things like Search, uh, Android, Chrome, Gmail, YouTube, et cetera. It's just an amazing array of products that users love and use virtually every day. Um, the amazing thing about it, if you take a step back, for many of these services, Google didn't have a rich understanding of the user on the other end of the query, if you will. So a user would come to Google, they would sort of hit seven keystrokes, they would hit enter, and magic happened. We, because of that flash of intent, that moment when we captured exactly what they were interested in, we could return a tremendous amount of value to that user. But Google sort of had a short-term memory. You know, if I typed in windsurfing or mortgage into the Google search engine, Even though we returned a result in 40 milliseconds, I was probably interested in windsurfing for more than 40 milliseconds, right? That's a durable interest. But Google had you know, amnesia. You'd come back the next day, and Google didn't remember you. It started from scratch every time you interacted with it. And this is one of the things that Google Plus intends to change. It's an opportunity for users to really introduce themselves to Google, to declare who they are. So I'm Loic. I'm 26 years old. <laughs> I'm live in San Francisco. I'm trying to see if I pull up. <laughs> yes. I want to see if you I blink. Wish. Um, and, you know, tell us who they are. Um, but you can also tell us who you know and what you care about. Sort of declare these things. And we think by understanding our users better, we'll be able to provide better quality of service across all we do. So better search, better phone, better local, better ads. Everything gets better when we have knowledge of the user, their interest, et cetera. So as an example of a better phone, for instance, um, right now, it's very unlikely my phone would ring. It's sort of you know, middle of the night in the States. But if my wife were to call, I'd want to take that call. It's obviously an emergency. And my phone should understand the relationship I have with my wife and put the call through. If a stranger is calling me or a headhunter is calling me, you know, send it to this number has been disconnected. Um, some recording that basically tells them to brush off. Uh, but my phone doesn't understand my relationship to people. It's not offering me that quality of service, and it demands that I make those decisions myself. And this is the kind of thing we can do when we understand users better. We can give them a tremendous assist across all the services that we have. Like the circles? You're yeah. hoping to, so if I understand well, connect the different Google services such as Google Voice with my circles on Google Plus? Is exactly. That? And so you will see this begin to happen dramatically. We did it uh, a few weeks ago with Google Local, which is now part of Google Plus. And so um, rather than seeing restaurant reviews from people I may or may not know with reputations I may or may not respect, I can now scope my searches and see recommendations from people I know and trust within my circles. So this is one example of a value proposition that makes an existing Google service better by dint of this shared infrastructure. And we're doing really well along that front. You've begun to see more and more Google Plus across all your Google services. So local is one example. The bar that greets me when I'm logged into Google across everything you do and has your notifications and the ability to sort of uh, share in situ from every product, that's another example. And there are many, many more on the way. 
So that's one way to think about Google+. What's the next one? The next one is as a new product with new services. And we are that as well. And so we did launch a social network. It has all the familiar underpinnings. We have a profile. We have a stream. We have a social graph via circles. Um, and we recognize being late to market, which is never the preferred position, it does afford you some opportunities to leapfrog what's out there. And so we did a lot of talking to users. We asked them what did they like about existing services and what could be improved. One thing we learned was that privacy actually matters. Users care about privacy worldwide, not only in Europe, but in the States too. And so... And um, that's a default in Google+. Plus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we want to give users actually friction. We actually believe in friction. And you know, there's a reason every word in your head doesn't come out of your mouth. Um, that's called friction. It's called you know, restraint. And we wanted to create a social network that gave people a chance to be contextual. And so with circles, I can be appropriate to the audience I'm talking to. So I can have one level of conversation with my colleagues at work, a different tone and different posture with my family, uh, my you know, high school buddies, we, we again share different things and talk about different but things. Yet you have to bring them into Google Plus. Uh, how about for you, you must have some friends who tell you, no, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Bradley. Yeah, and I do think that we're early in the going here. Right now, um, the intent, if you think about this strategy, is not to immediately have people wishing each other happy birthday and watering each other's farms on Google+. Do I aspire to get there one day? I think we will, and that will be a fine outcome. But right now, we have a very different value proposition. If you look at something like Hangouts, which I know you guys have used extensively, um, it's really elevating the conversation. So instead of 140-character blurbs or sort of sound bites, you can actually look someone in the eyes. You can talk to somebody in an authentic way. It can be a family reunion, and we see people that are displaced by geography sort of connecting over Hangouts. It can be sort of celebrity casting. So we have you know, everything from musical artists to politicians that are using Hangouts. Obama did a Hangout to, to uh, talk to citizens. And, you know, these are very, very different than any other service out there. So that's your key differentiator, you would say. Hangout is really big for Well, you. I think it's one of the differentiators. In terms of the actual product, we are just getting started. You know, 11 months in the history of social networking is not a long time, and we have many more features and parts of the product which are yet to be revealed. How many members of Google Plus? So, in terms of how we're doing, we, the last number we have shared is 170 million users have upgraded their accounts so that they're no longer coming in this unidentified state, but they're showing up at Google in this richly identified state with a profile that probably has their picture, their name, information about who they are, who they know, and what they care about. And how, how many use it? And, and I should mention that that 170 million number is quite stale. Larry, that Larry announced that at the last earnings call. Um, I am hopeful that he will have new numbers to report in the next earnings call, and the numbers are dramatic and good. So um, growth continues. How now, is it going? You're happy with the growth because, like, you're. So if we talk about Facebook, there are 900 million. Is that you know? I think that's their number. Um, so are you? happy about it because that must be quite a challenge as a yeah to head get of product. to hundreds of millions of users uh, in 11 months is dramatic if you look at the growth rate of every social network that's been successful um, many of them took years sometimes four years before they hit the inflection point and entered that hyper growth phase and so you don't think you've hit that no I don't think we've hit the hyper growth phase um, I think that you know, there's a saying, maybe it's a French saying, that nine women cannot have a baby in a month, right? Um, there are certain things that are organic, a certain growth rate for these things that happen in the due course of time. And uh, while we're stunned at the growth, I never thought I'd be sitting here almost a year from when we launched with hundreds of millions of people using our service. Um, but I do think that our best days are ahead of us, and many of the things that I know are yet to launch will make dramatic differences in the usage. Um, I would call out one example of those as the mobile clients that we recently launched. So we launched beautiful, dramatic clients, if you haven't seen them, on, on iOS and Android. And they really are stunning in their presentation, um, graphical appeal, the way they pull the content forward. I think it's... Um, great for any company to do this. I think it's stunning for Google to have done this, given um, the sort of tone of our information-centric applications. These are much more graphical and much more emotionally resonant. And what we saw when we launched those was 
dramatic increase in usage across both mobile platforms. And um, for us, this is... What's the split between mobile and desktop? Use um, or web use? I will tell you, the one thing I will tell you is that as a result of the recent mobile launches, the um, mobile usage is increasing dramatically. Um, That's very precise, Bradley. Thank yeah. you. Um, and, and as a fraction of all overall usage, it's, it's on the rise. And what is interesting about this is for us, mobile usage is not a problem. It doesn't impact our business model. It doesn't impact our business. It's actually a good thing for us. And so we're dramatically investing in the mobile clients and tablet as well. And, uh, so you work for Google, right? Yes. And you have a, an iPad here. I do have an iPad here, yes. I have... Uh, That's interesting. Did you want to... <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I like that. Yeah, um, it's a great product. It, does it run on Android? Um, does it, the iPad run on Android? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Did um, you want to show us something? I, I think uh, there is, because there is uh, one thing which is a frustration. You have a lot of developers and entrepreneurs yep. here. Is we, we'd like to you know, use your API. Yeah, so let me, let me speak about the APIs. You know, Google I.O. is... Um, Next week. Yes. So I hope all of you Great are... Great timing, right, to have you here. And yeah, I, it's, it's even, even, even more impressive you came. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm excited about I.O. as well, I hope. But you're going to announce all the uh, Google I.O. news today, then. No, I'm not. <laughs> we discussed this, Louis. Okay. Um, but I am going to announce something. And I, I wanted to share, you know, when I say we're just getting started, an example of this is our APIs. We have tried to compress, you know, a decade of social networking history into a matter of months. But one of the things we understood we needed to do was be very thoughtful in how we release the API. And so we have a handful of API partners. We have a handful of gaming partners. And we wanted to make sure that the experience was good for all parties, not only the developers who are reaching an audience, but the users who don't want errant viral apps to dominate their stream. So we wanted the right noise controls in there. Um, but today, I'm happy to announce that we're opening up to one more partner. I will uh, actually plug this in and see if this works. And um, you may recognize this. Give them a second. Uh, let's, let's see if we can bring it up. Uh, just sure. wait there. They're okay. probably working on it right now. Well, while they're working on it, just I'll, keep just, talking. I'll exactly. show you guys. Um, Flipboard. I'm pleased to announce that Flipboard is now a partner with Google+. Um, it's early days, but you know, Flipboard is an amazing application. Talk about graphically appealing. Um, this is my Google Plus stream. It includes the information from my circles. It has the right API. I can comment. I can post. All of this stuff yeah, is you're integrated. On Bradley, you can yeah. just use it okay. as normal. Okay. It's, it's beautiful. It's um, dramatic. And we couldn't be happier with this partnership. And so the question, of course, is when will we open this up more widely for everyone? And the answer is when we can do it in a way that we know is good for users and safe and have debugged this. So this is another step in our journey, uh, but one that should provide encouragement and certainly for users, um, a great app that's integrated with ours. Can we go back, go back to uh, Bradley's iPad, please? Yeah. Um, I can see a slide right now, but we have it live. Yeah. So can we switch back to uh, the iPad, please? Um, so you have Google Plus integration. What does this mean? How is that? So it's for content. Can I comment? Can yeah, I, what can I can, do with you it? You can comment. You can plus one. You know, I'm, looking, I'm showing you an early build here. You can scope uh, to circles. Um, it just works like it should. And Flipboard has done an amazing job. Um, you see great content, um, very high resolution content. Uh, I can reshare content. It's, it's the standard Flipboard um, interface metaphors, but with the Google Plus functionality that you would expect, scoping so to circles. So you can share to Google Plus, but also Twitter and Facebook like they already had, I guess. Well, yes. Are you not scared about that, that they, you're going to get content that is just going to, because you've been very, specific about having content which is original to Google+, right? I think what's important is to keep the conversation authentic and coherent. And so this is one of the reasons why we're moving cautiously with a, a single partner right now, is we want to explore how this does impact usage within the stream and how users actually use this. Um, and we want to make sure it's good for all parties. Um, I do have a couple friends backstage. Can I bring those guys sure, out? Sure, of okay. course, Bradley. Um, keep, keep your iPad on in case we want to show something. OK. Um, the friends I wanted to bring out were uh, a couple of Google Plus advocates from Crafts Foods. Um, it's Bonin Bao and Sonia Carter. And um, Kraft, through the Cadbury brand, has been really a poster child for brand engagement on Google+. They have done some amazing things, run some amazing contests, and um, just wanted them to have an opportunity to share a few words. 
Thank you. How are but you, in, sir? welcome. Please have a seat here. I'll, I'll, Thank I'll you. sit of course, on the of course, side. Of I'll be quiet. I'll sit on the side too. Um, great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys Hi. for having us. Bonin, I'll let you drive this. I'm sorry, Bradley, I'll let you drive this. Bonin, welcome. I so just think we craft. throw the ball to you guys. Um, tell us how you've used Google+. Yeah, well, first, uh, I just want to say hello to everybody. Uh, hello, the Web London. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, and I remember when we sat down at South By and you told me about it and you showed me the shot of this place and we said, yes, we definitely want in. Uh, but as always, the production value and the people that you brought and the speakers are, are far above and beyond, so I'm super excited to be a part of it. Thank you, um, I'm actually going to let Sonia talk a little bit about the Google Plus, and I'm just going to jump in after, talk about kind of from a top line where we're looking at it. Um, yeah, so just to give you a, a background about why, uh, why we're on Google Plus and how we've been so successful, we're actually, I believe, one of the biggest consumer brands on there. We've just almost hit 1.6 million people have us in their circles, which is uh, pretty uh, amazing. So amazing added you on Google Plus, 1.6 yes. million. Yes. So we've just passed Barack Obama. So uh, you know, we're doing pretty well. What does this <laughs> say about Barack Obama, you think? Well, I think the interesting <laughs> thing is that I think uh, David Cameron has 200 and something. So we just need him to maybe talk about chocolate a little bit more and less about the euro and uh, oh, here we go. a few more fans. <laughs> Um, so it was really a, quite serendipitous for us. We are, it was a big year for, for the Cadbury brand this year. We're an Olympic sponsor. We have a lot of new product launches, a lot of campaigns happening. So we usually, we have, um, we're very social brands and we have lots of existing channels uh, for individual products like Whisper and Dairy Milk. And we wanted to start speaking as Cadbury because there's just, we have so much great content this year to talk about. And that coincided with uh, the timing of Google Plus launching and we had a look and we were being spoken about already. We could see that people were sharing content about our brands. People, we're very lucky that people love talking about chocolate. They love talking about our brands. What do you talk about on, on your Google Plus and I guess other social networks? What do we talk about? Yes. Uh, well, it's very easy to talk about chocolate this year. Uh, this year we're, we're able to talk also about our Olympic sponsorship. So we've had um, we've had some hangouts with our GB athletes like Rebecca Adlington, who's probably the most well-known British athlete, one of our biggest hopes. So um, I think speaking as Cadbury gives us that really, really broad scope of very rich content, and people love sharing photos they interact on with there. You. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean that people fall over themselves to talk about chocolate uh, at all hours of the day. And I, and, I bet, uh, Br yeah. Bradley, how do you see brands with Google Plus? You, you, you launched those pages not that long ago, right? Yeah. It was a and it's amazing that they're getting this kind of audience this quickly. Again, it's something we, we didn't expect in our wildest dreams. Um, I think these guys are setting an example. What I love about the way that they use the product is it's really authentic. I mean, you really feel like they're there. They're not just pulling a handle and spitting out content that's brochureware. They're on there engaging with people literally face-to-face -face sometimes in Hangouts responding to comments in discussion. It's a very dynamic exchange, and I think it's um, sort of the model of what we aspire to when brands adopt our platform. How do you see yeah, the future, Bonin? <laughs> no, well, seriously, you're, it's a challenge for a brand to communicate. Yeah, you, you, you're moved from you know, more like traditional marketing into amazing social presence, and, and uh, you've been doing that, both of you, for a while. Well, you know, I That's think... That's why we met at Subway, right? <laughs> but so how do you see the future? How is that evolving? Is that going to replace marketing? Are you shifting dramatically your budgets from we traditional are. TV and into, into uh, buying, uh, buying, creating content on social and, and buying ads there? Or? So, you know, it's interesting. So my role at Kraft uh, is to run all media globally, TV, print, digital, all included in that. I don't think they realized what they were doing when they offered me the role uh, because, yes, so, that, so it's not just about shifting budget, but it's about shifting the mindset. So how does everything that we do become social? How do these mass channels drive to social? So TV is more important than ever, but primarily because it's becoming a precious commodity. Engagement is becoming precious. So for us to make those work better for us, we need to have socially engaged ecosystems around it. I think what Sonia and Jerry on our team uh, have done amazingly from a strategic standpoint is that they've taken Google Plus and it wasn't just we're going to do Google Plus over here in this isolated social channel, but we're going to put Google Plus at the center of our overall Olympic campaign. So all of the different marketing components are driving to the socially engaged, you know, experience. So from when I look at the future, it's about you know. Tell me about TV, the future. 
Yeah, so because Bradley won't tell me what he does with TV, <laughs> but you can tell me. Fair enough. Well, I think it's about shifting from impressions to connections. So it's about how do we take these mass channels and drive people into more connected experience. So I actually think there's a renaissance uh, of creativity that's about to happen. So I think the commercial is going to be just the trailer to the bigger experience uh, to a brand. And I think that we've never... You know, we're now just on the verge of flipping that. So right now you'll see a little call to action uh, with Twitter on it. That's nothing to what it's going to be where we're going to say, you know, here's the experience that you can expect to find if you connect with us on so-and-so channel. So I think that that's where the future is going to go. And I think it's connected TV, you know, and we're going big on connected TV, big on mobile, big on mobile at retail. I also think that print is the new digital. So I think what you're going to start seeing is integration and interaction with the print page in ways that we've never experienced before. And so I think that, and, and I think Google Plus will be at the heart of a lot of that, primarily because of its integration across search. When I think of Google as a partner, there's very few partners that have all the pieces, mobile, video, social, search, you know, I mean, and you can go down the line. And so it's really important to take a partner like that and figure out how do we integrate that partner into everything we're doing. Does that? So I think that's what the future looks like. <laughs> I was <expecting. laughs> It wasn't succinct, but... <laughs> And, well, talking about the future of TV, I think you, uh, you, brought, you brought a hangout, right? Yeah, I brought some more friends. They're on the internet. Let's bring them up. Uh, let's see how we can, uh, we can do this. Uh, can we get the hangout on, on, on the stage? So we maybe for those that have never used a hangout, I'll just orient them. What you guys see is um, people from around the world, actually, that are in a Google Plus hangout. Um, they're joining us here. Um, now, Hangouts require nothing special. Instead of high-end video conferencing equipment, you have a webcam integrated into most laptops these days. Um, you can have a mobile phone, so you can actually do Hangouts from uh, mobile devices. Um, and it's sort of multiplex, multi-way video. These can be broadcast, so you can actually have a Hangout with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people watching. And there's a whole platform. And within Hangouts, all kinds of applications have been built. So, um, maybe what we should start with is if you guys could, from uh, left to right, maybe introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Who's left? Who's left? <laughs> <laughs> Stage left. Just kidding. Pick a left. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> My name is Chris Tancy. I'm uh, from Denver, Colorado. Just happened to be visiting London today and excited to be here. Hey, uh, my name is Evgeny. Uh, I'm co-founder of 500px. It's almost 6 a.m. in Toronto, so I'm joining uh, remotely. Hi, I'm uh, Guillaume Thomas. I'm uh, from France. I'm the CEO of uh, Aladom, and uh, it's 11.48 in France. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Neville Hobson. I'm in working about 40 miles west of you in London. I'm a communicator, blogger, and a podcaster. Very pleased to be with you all. Okay, so we have, uh, if I got this right, the United States, Canada, France, and London uh, here with us today. And this is one of the things I love about Hangouts is that it really brings people together. If you do sort of public Hangouts, I often have people from the Philippines or from Eastern Europe that are joining. It's really a great means of connecting to other people. Um, what I would like to do is use this to do any Q&A that you guys have in the Hangouts. If you have any questions about Google, Google+, Craft, Brands, or a question for Luik that's totally unrelated, um, that's fine. <laughs> well, could I kick off with the first question, uh, Bradley? Um, it's, it's an area of strong interest to me, which is uh, I've been a Google Plus user since its start. I think the second day it was announced, I was in there and uh, been using it uh, since then. I experiment a lot, Hangouts, I think it's very cool indeed. I'm wondering, uh, some of the companies that I talk to, uh, either big organizations or, or small or mid-sized businesses for that matter, it doesn't really matter the size, don't use Google Plus uh, in the workplace beyond, I guess, checking it from a social network point of view. I'm wondering, uh, looking at this as, a, as an end-to-end -end solution, thinking about what you described earlier, uh, that you see Google Plus being, what would you say um, would be, uh, I guess, the answer to the question in organizations, the role a tool like Google Plus could play in an organizational setting, thinking in terms of collaborative working, connecting employees in different locations, uh, information sharing, what, what would you see as the role for Google Plus in that situation? Wow, that, that is a great question. We think that the enterprise use case, everything from multinational corporations down to mom and pop businesses, 
is a fantastic opportunity for Google and Google+. As you guys know, we already offer many of our quote unquote consumer products in an enterprise edition, things like Gmail, Google Docs. This fits in perfectly, and in fact, we within Google use it extensively as a means of sharing information, everything from the virtual water cooler to small team work groups using things like Hangouts to actually collaborate across the miles. Um, the way it looks when you do this is that you have a new circle, and that circle could be my coworkers if I want to publish to the entirety of Google, or it could be my team if I want to discuss something that's private to our team. Um, I do find, and this is rather stunning, that people are already using Google Plus in this way. There's a lot of setup that's required, and it's too much work. But small companies, and startups especially, are using things like Hangouts to run their scrums and daily stand-ups and company meetings. Um, and it's always gratifying when I see um, companies that aren't going to wait for Google to sort of formally launch this, but are, are taking the tool and finding it so valuable and convenient that they're incorporating it into their process already. So I think it's a great question. I think there's a real market need, and we're focused on it. It's something we're definitely going to do. I also cool. think it has a huge benefit from changing culture inside of an organization. I think that, you know, that yeah. cultural piece, I think Jamie Oliver spoke about it a little bit when he was saying in San Francisco, it just is a cultural feel that's a, a little bit different. And so for us, it's how do we take tools that can actually shape culture of organizations and get us to think totally differently. And I think, you know, Hangout provides it up. We actually use it uh, to drive our uh, next project, which is you know, how do we rethink digital across developing markets, so. How you rethink across developing markets? across developing markets. So that's how we connect with all the teams across developing markets. Because it's important, I mean, we have to bring a, mind, a different mindset into the organization, and just having tools that are of a different ilk as part of the core organizing platform forces us to be in a different mindset. So most, most organizations our size are not using Google Hangout as their core thing for collaboration. <laughs> but they will. <laughs> okay. Right now, uh, I should say, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's fine. Um, another question from the Hangout? Uh, Bradley, this is Chris. Um, my organization is uh, about 1,000 people, and my marketing team uses um, Hangouts all the time to collaborate on documents um, and to <laughs> even share videos with each other. One of the things we're most excited about is our Hangout Lives, so actually saving our meetings uh, to share with people who could make it there at that time. Do you see uh oh. Technology. Can you? This can is you repeat great, the Bradley. Question? That shows it's actually real. <laughs> this is not a can demo. These are real people. Go, can you ahead, ask that again, Chris? I think you're sure. out. We were we were talking about Hangout Lives. Hangouts on air. Hangouts on air. Uh, yeah, Hangouts on air. So. Um, what we did recently, and this is literally weeks, probably four weeks ago, we turned on uh, what Chris is referring to, Hangouts on Air. And what Hangouts on Air do is allow everyone to become a webcaster and broadcast a Hangout. That could be um, an infomercial, somebody that's up there and just talking about some product or service that they love. It could be a musician that's doing an intimate concert with a couple of super fans, but the whole world is watching. Um, it could be a politician who's sort of doing a town hall meeting and, again, broadcasting to a larger base. Um, we think just as YouTube has changed the world in terms of people having a voice, this creates a means by which the whole world can be watching, and it will have impact across many different forms of uh, society, from politics to entertainment to uh, the way people socialize and hang out. Um, so Hangouts on Air are a big part of our story. Um, as is the Hangout platform more generally. You mentioned screen sharing. Um, we have things like a poker game, and third parties are writing these applications within the Hangouts framework. You know, It's fun to play online poker. It's a lot more fun when you can look the players in the eye and see who's bluffing and actually win some money. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, let's OK, one more. one more question, please. And by the way, you, you guys, okay. this is kind of getting meta here, because you guys are all around the world. We are in London. We have a room here, and we are restreaming this on YouTube Live, uh, where can pe people can interact as well. And I, I have to say that this is uh, how I see also the web going forward. Is we're just a studio cool. for more thousands of people, and uh, I, I hope we do the entire conference like like uh, like this. So, sorry, awesome. go ahead, Neville. Okay. How are you, my friend? <laughs> uh, can I answer a question? Yes. Please. 
so Aladom is a website uh, for home services, and we are present in uh, different countries. We launched in France, and now we're launching in uh, Germany, Belgium, and the USA. Uh, do you have any best practice for companies like us that uh, go in different countries with different la languages uh, regarding what we should do on Google Plus? It's amazing how I, I get his accent very well. Yeah, I can't oh, understand it. Yeah. I've already said um, something about <laughs> <Long translation. laughs> no, uh, it, it wasn't the hangout this time. No, he said uh, you, you're you're one of the best known head of product yeah. uh, in the world, and uh, he wanted you to share his adv your advice on how to roll out a product internationally uh, in, in like tens of languages. And do you, for example, let me add to your question, do you start with English first and then you ignore everything else, or are you trying to... No, we simultaneously it? launched in more than 40 languages. We've right. since increased that to more than 60 languages. This is a product for humanity. I, I will say that I don't expect most companies can operate at the scale that Google does, and so I'm not sure that this commitment to supporting languages around the world um, is appropriate for every startup that's sort of just getting going. I think you should um, prove to yourself that your idea works and that you know it's worth the investment because it does take considerable investment and energy. But um, it's it's a decision I think you should factor very early in your product development process to make sure, obviously, that the code is internationalized and can be localized for every region you care about. What else is fascinating to me, and this wasn't exactly the question, was sort of the cultural use cases and sensitivities as we go around the world. So in Japan, um, we have a promotion with a pop band called AKB48, and the usage of our product in Japan is so intense, we thought there was a bug in our logging system. It just spiked. And every time AKB48 has a concert or what they call a general election, um, we actually have to alert our uh, data centers that there's going to be this enormous spike in usage. And um, you know that's a behavior we don't yet see elsewhere in the world, just this intense sort of descent upon our product at certain moments in time. Um, but we learn a tremendous amount from these things. It not only stress tests test the system, but some of these learnings are things that can be translated to different cultures. And um, I think it's one of the great gifts is to be um, thinking globally and to be connecting humanity and to be taking the best of what we see in these cultures and, and sharing it with everyone around the world. Well, thank you guys on the Hangout. Um, a few... Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Neville and everybody. Thank good, you. Good, good to cool. see you. Thank you. Uh, come back anytime. We'll, uh, we'll have you back up. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And we're doing cool. more Thanks. hangouts in the back as well in, uh, awesome. with the speakers. So, Sonia, you tell, tell me about you know something that excites you around social, particularly in your in your daily uh, you know job in, with your brands. Give me one example of something that you think is really exciting. Maybe with the Olympics as as you know final closing words. Um, well, I, I think that it, it's really um, uh, this is going to be the first Social Olympics. That's been said by by many many people. Um, it scares some people. For us, we see it as a massive way of um, of uh, punching above our, our weight and and getting cut through. And we know that we're going to be able to to talk not only about the sporting events, but also we're trying. You know, Cadbury's efforts is to bring the games closer to the people for those of us who can't compete, can't get to the game. So we are really, look really, really excited about stuff that we're going to be doing on Google Plus and um, the other channels to, to really bring, you know, make the Olympics fun. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how that's going to pan out. I'm really glad that I don't have to have um, every minute of every communication planned out that we can use social to be reactive. I, th I don't think anyone knows how it's going to go. So, um, you know, we've got a uh, a team of us who are going to be on 24-7, and um, although they're in the audience probably slightly worried about that, that I've just said that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that we're able to react to trends um, and, you know, take advantage of uh, some of the features that we've got on Google+, Plus and, and have Hangouts, and have, a, have circles. And, and you'll be around during the conference if, uh, you know, I know, Bonin, you like entrepreneurs, and it's I pretty know. amazing for a brand to, to, you know, be here just in a technology event and, and do what you do, so... Uh, we can talk to you and I, I would love to meet every single one of you guys So yes, I'll be here. Please stop me But I also think that you brought it up and I think you know Sonia has been leading the efforts and I'm so excited to have her on the team uh, just our investment in London and uh, 
our, our belief that London is one of the next Silicon Valleys and that what the entrepreneurs and startups are doing here, Google Campus, uh, Tech City, UK Tech Trade Investment, C Camp, you, you can go down and down, is amazing and we're just excited to be a part of that and excited to be able to help support those efforts. Uh, and we offer our brands up as uh, you know, sandboxes for you guys to work with us to kind of rethink the future of TV, but even more, I think, just the future of connectivity and engagement. So Excellent. Yeah. Yes, Sonia? I was just going to say a quick one. Yeah, just for everyone to keep a, a, an eye out for us. We're, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, some more events. We've just had our, our first hackathon, which we, we ran at uh, Google Campus, which was a fantastic opportunity for us to get to know some startups and developers. It's amazing that a, a consumer, like a major brand like you, uh, start you know, doing things with startups and, and developers. Yeah. We're, we're getting uh, a little late, so okay. Okay. I would love to keep going this conversation. Bradley, thank you so much for coming uh, from California and going straight to Google I.O. now. Thank you. I really appreciate it. The pleasure. Morning. Save, you know, you're in between two <laughs> planes, so this is amazing. And Sonia, we'll thank see you, you so around. Much, we'll see you again here. Thanks thank so you, much. Bradley. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you.